This is the Space Black M3 Pro MacBook Pro, the one that everybody says you probably shouldn't get. Not because of the Space Black color, but because people are saying that the performance of the M3 Pro is just not a big difference from previous years. Are they right? I have no idea but we're gonna find out over the next couple of weeks. I bought the M3 Pro specifically because one, I wanted it to be more price conscious and I know I do not need the performance of the Max computers anymore, like for my workflow. And two, in the previous couple of years, the Max chips have run quite a bit warmer than the Pro chips. And you know what? I could just use a slightly cooler laptop that I'm using every day. So I wanna go ahead and unbox this computer, take a look at the fingerprint situation, compare it against some other colors, and find out, does this computer have the same issue as my regular M3 and not being able to actually export Final Cut Pro projects? So like I said, this is the 14 inch M3 Pro version. This is the upgraded M3 Pro. So it's got the 12 core CPU, 18 core GPU, 36 gigabytes of memory and a two terabyte SSD because I find that two terabytes is the sweet spot for me. So I guess we'll just see what this guy looks like. Bam. And we all know what's in the box. You get, ah, I love MacBooks. You get a space black cable, which that's kind of cool. And it looks like it's color matched. So that's exciting. That's pretty black, just looking at it right here. Then we also have the regular stickers. And with the Pro model, we get the 96 watt hour battery charger. And I have to show you the stickers because it's contractually obligated for every YouTuber to show you the Apple stickers. And I'm joking, of course, and this video is not sponsored by anyone. And now my first look at this Space Black MacBook Pro. Oh yeah, there it is. That laser etched MacBook label at the bottom. It's pretty nice. Oh, yep. Okay. Yes, that does look actually pretty darn nice. You know, I just never know how these things are going to look when I see them in person, but you know what? It looks fantastic. I freaking love the look of this space black. And of course we have to do a fingerprint test because Apple says that they have a new anodization process to limit the fingerprints on this darker space black color. So let's go ahead and get a baseline. We'll just put a nice big thumbprint right on the Apple logo. You can see that, yeah? All right, and let's just see what happens. Let's, let's finger this computer get it all greasy and see what it looks like. And I mean, just looking at it, if I did this on the blue MacBook Air, it would be absolutely disgusting at this point. So right away, it's looking not too bad. And, and it seems to wipe away pretty easy, even with my greasy fingers. You know what? I do have the space gray. So let's go ahead and check that out real quick. Here's the space gray. Nice big fingerprint on the Apple logo for you. Hopefully you can see that. And let's do the same. Just kind of get all up in there. And yeah, you can see things a little bit more maybe on the space gray. But I mean, they look pretty similar, which I guess is good because that means that the darker color is actually performing better than it normally would. So that's cool. And here's a quick color comparison showing you the different colors of some MacBooks we have the space black here in the center, which looks very different from the silver. And the silver and this space gray MacBook Pro over here look very similar in this lighting compared to the space black. But is it really black? I got some other things, so let's find out. Here is a Samsung T7 SSD. They call it black. Here is a black metallic something iPhone stand. I think it's probably steel or aluminum. This is pretty black. Here is a Dell little mini micro PC. It is black. And here is a Dell laptop that is plastic and black. So how black is space black? Eh, less than black, I guess, but it still looks pretty darn cool. All right, so we're going to open this up for the first time. And inside, yep, it looks like a MacBook Pro, just like you would expect. Large trackpad, perfect keyboard, I think. You got the ports on the left side, so two Thunderbolt ports. You get a MagSafe port and audio connection. And then on the right side, you do have the SD card slot, another Thunderbolt port and HDMI. So I'm going to go ahead and set this guy up and then I want to do a Final Cut Pro export test just to make sure it actually works on this computer because it has not worked correctly on my regular M3 MacBook Pro. 
All right, so now I'm up and running on the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, and I'm going to do a Final Cut Pro export test and see if it actually completes. And if you haven't seen my other video showing all the issues I had trying to export video with Final Cut on the M3 MacBook Pro, I will leave a link in the description below. All right, so we're going to do what I always do. I'm going to go to uh, export, and for settings, I'm going to choose uh, multi-pass H.264. So that should give me a decent quality video. It's gonna be about 2.14 gigabytes. And we're just going to save it. Next, and we'll just save it to temp. We'll export in three, two, one, go. All right, so let's bring up Activity Monitor and see what's going on on this computer. Check out the memory. And now this computer has 36 gigabytes of memory. It's probably not going to have the same issues that I had with the M3 Pro. Although I didn't have any issues with eight gigabytes on the regular M2 Air or even the M1 Air. So I don't exactly think that memory was the issue on the M3 MacBook Pro. And hopefully there's an update coming for Final Cut or for Mac OS to fix that issue. But in the meantime, I also did a test with Premiere Pro on the M3 MacBook Pro and had no issues exporting a video with Premiere. So far, no memory issues on this MacBook Pro, 36 gigabytes of memory. Again, we're using about 19 or 20 right now. We're using maybe around four or five total for Final Cut and the export processes. All right, so we're past the 50% mark, we're at 55%. And as you can see, the computer is using nowhere near 100% of the GPU or the CPU. And we're actually using less memory on the computer right now, a total of 11.4 compared to the 19 or 20 we were using when we first started. And so far, it seems to be running smoothly. At 65%, again, the memory is still much lower than when we started, it's about 12 gigabytes. But look down here, there's also zero swap memory being used at all. And of course, that is the benefit of having real physical memory in a computer rather than relying on swap memory. So still running smoothly. We're approaching 85% now on this export test. Memory is still looking great. We're using a little bit more GPU than we were earlier in the export process. Okay, and there we go. About 88% and then it just completed. And it completed in about 14 minutes and nine seconds, which is basically real time because this video is 14 minutes and eight seconds. And that's not super great, but whatever. We never experienced any memory pressure issues as seen with Activity Monitor. The GPU and the CPU looked fairly underutilized, but it did actually complete the export in this M3 Pro, which, well, I have to say is better than the results of the regular M3 MacBook Pro. So that's it for my first look at this brand new M3 Pro MacBook Pro in space black. Love the color. Going to be testing it over the next couple of days and see how well it actually performs against my M2 Max. Hopefully I didn't waste my money. Hopefully I made the right decision for going forward, but we will find out. Now, if you're curious about anything on this, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see that video where I do those Final Cut test, Final Cut Pro tests, on the M3 MacBook Pro, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.